Well, he is known for making his mark on the basketball court as a former Utah Jazz legend, and he was even part of the USA Olympic Dream Team back in the 90s. Well, now John Stockton is back in the headlines, this time attaching his name to a lawsuit. It says a policy punishing doctors who spoke out against the CDC's COVID recommendations violates their freedom of speech. Stockton, along with RFK Jr. and several medical professionals, are suing officials in Washington state. News Nation has reached out to the attorney general's office as well as the state's medical commission requesting a statement or a comment there just to let everybody know we have not heard back uh, from either of them. But joining us now is NBA Hall of Famer, the NBA's all time leader in both assists and steals, John Stockton and his attorney, Rick Jaffe. Gentlemen, it's good to have you both on the show. Thank you. Good to be here. Thanks. So, you know, John, you're far from the only American unhappy with COVID restrictions and how those restrictions really silenced certain voices. But a lot of people haven't filed suit over it. Why are you taking this on? I think it just has to be done. A good friend of mine, Dr. Eggleston, who writes a, uh, a editorial for Lewiston, uh, the Lewiston, Lewiston Tribune in Lewiston, Idaho, he's one of the guys, a retired guy, brilliant guy, talks about what's healthy for people, gives alternatives like ivermectin as thoughts. Yeah. He's just using his wisdom to to share with people. It's so difficult yeah. to get information in this COVID era. So uh, they're trying to take his license away, even though it's it's not a practicing issue. It's it's just a intrusion, another intrusion, especially in Washington State on our right to freedom of speech. Yeah, and a lot of people angry just like you. And by the way, too, just for viewers to know, this isn't the first time you've been critical of COVID policies. I mean, during the pandemic, you had your season tickets suspended at Gonzaga, where you played college ball because you refused to wear a mask. That must have felt like betrayal in your own house. No, it wasn't a lot of fun. It's uh, because I'm a public figure. I think I stuck out a little bit. There were other people doing it as well. But I couldn't sit across from all these students, these young people who were being forced to be vaccinated uh, against their will and uh, forced to wear masks when I know both are very unhealthy. Mm -hmm. Rick, this has been one of those contentious you know, questions for several years now, right? I mean, where is the line between freedom of speech and misinformation? At what point does the government have a responsibility to call out misinformation, especially in the context of a health emergency, the likes that, of which we'd never seen before, like the pandemic? Well, first of all, you know, there's misinformation and basically malinformation. The, the, the government appears not to like what a lot of people are saying that criticize the COVID narrative, but they haven't actually had a very good track record. So I think the law is basically that it, everyone has the right to stand up and speak their mind in public on matters of public interest. I think that is almost a ground rock principle. And, you know, and I think this is just a reaction. One of the reactions, the overreaction that has come up as a result of the pandemic where people just get terrified, like keeping people off the beaches. Mm -hmm. So I think this is part of it. I think ultimately the courts are going to say that the government has no role in stopping professionals, licensees, people who have medical training from getting up and voicing their opinions on public. Look, it's one thing if they want to say, if the medical commission wants to say you can't prescribe ivermectin, that's sort of within the heartland of what medical boards uh, can do. But we don't have a tradition in this country, maybe in Russia or, or communist China they do, but in this country, we do not have a tradition or a history of sanctioning people, professionals for speaking out in public against what the the government says is true doctor that we don't have that here yeah. this is the first time they've ever tried to do this yeah uh yeah you make really good points there john the other question i had for you it's been four years since the onset of the COVID 19 pandemic uh, why are you suing now well in washington state they're still advertising safe and effective i mean the pfizer reports their very own reports announced uh, 1200 deaths and 42,000 injuries in three months and yet our health district, our state, the state of Washington is still saying, no, they're safe and effective. Please get your booster. And it's to me, that's absurd. Uh, and yet, so, so the truth is coming from our doctors, but they're not allowed to speak it. And so if truth matters, then uh, I think they should have every right uh, to speak, even if they're not correct, but yeah. they have been. If, if, if the two of you were to win this case, what does justice look like in the end? Well, I think it's pretty simple. Let me just answer that. The goal of the lawsuit is to stop the Washington Medical Commission from investigating, uh, prosecuting, or sanctioning physicians for speaking out in public against the CDC and the mainstream COVID narrative. That's the goal of the lawsuit. So that's what we're looking for.
Thanks for watching, everybody. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. Also, don't forget to click that red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.